All right. So, uh, Hedy, I don't know if uh, um, I had asked you, have you got any WordPress issues that are you're bringing to us tonight? Oh, so many, but <laughs> I don't have to burden the room so much. I'm, um, I have a site. I, I been dabbling forever and I have a whole bunch of sites for family members, but I actually do have a company that seriously, um, wants me to take care of the site and I'm failing miserably at it. So that should be my priority. Um, it's, to be honest, I forget how I built it. It was a while ago. I think it's a Divi site. And I have been in these meetups before where Divi was a really bad word. So I was kind of afraid to mention that last time I was here, but I'm just going to come straight out and ask what the room thinks about Divi at this point in time. I started it before Gutenberg. That's how long ago it was. And that's why none of this is in my head anymore. And I think the original and I have other sites and themes that have been retired. So I have so many issues. So I thought well, I'd listen for a bit. And I think through osmosis, maybe I'll learn some and then kind of figure out what questions I should ask first. Yeah, as, as the organizer of this group, you know, uh, obviously there's people who are going to have opinions, but there shouldn't be any question that should be, you know, discouraged because, hey, Travis, uh, there shouldn't be, a, you're muted. Uh, there shouldn't be any questions that are discouraged because of, uh, you know, political reasons, you know. Thank you. I don't know. Divi's I established. I, I mean, that... it's been around for over 10 years. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's an add-on one. Is it, it will potentially slow down your site a little more than other? You're not using it on all these things, yes, but it's probably not going anywhere for a while. It's one of the first. Okay. Yeah, I mean Elementor. That's the way I look at it. Talked about we've talked about Elementor being something that is very popular, and I prefer. I've always preferred not to use third party. Um, you know, I mean, on the one hand, if you're new, it can be fun and easier to use a WYSIWYG sort of plugin that that adds to the editor, but there's a cost you know and and uh so i usually will admonish new people uh understand there is a cost and you may find yourself further down the road wishing you hadn't used it um, because a lot of them will set up their own proprietary code within the core Whereas, you know, this is one of the reasons why I celebrated and cried the day that Gutenberg dropped because it was like, okay, they're adding an advanced editor to the core, but of course it's going to have its, its uh, birthing uh, issues, you know, and we're still waiting for Gutenberg to fully realize its potential, but it's, um, it's nice not to worry about you know, because I've, I've saved a couple people who came to me <clears throat> wanting to have help with the fact that they, they had a third party WYSIWYG editor that they were using. And then suddenly that, like plugins sometimes do, it went away. You know, they stopped supporting it. It wasn't great so, uh, anymore. And yet it was all this proprietary code, which there was no way to just easily import that stuff into the core. Um, so there is a cost if you use these third party things, especially as we expect Gutenberg to improve and the necessity for these products to be less and less, you know, mm -hmm. that's, that's how I feel about it. So it's 608. Why don't we uh, get rolling? Uh, let me see here. Let me get our. Rules up. Would somebody like to volunteer to read our rules? Hey, I'm going to close some doors and stuff. So I'll be back. Anybody? Sure, I'll read them. Chuck, uh, go for Word it. Thank you. WordPress Web Help Meetup Group. Got a WordPress question, problem, or challenge? 
or are you an expert with knowledge and experience and the willingness to share it? Join us to ask your questions and discuss topics, issues, and products in the WordPress world. Guidelines. All comments and discussion discussions should be respectful of others. Please add a profile photo to your Zoom account so we can still see your face when you turn off your camera. Please raise your virtual hand if you'd like to speak. Mute your microphone when you aren't speaking. During speaker presentations, type your questions in the chat. Fair enough. Cool, thank you, Chuck. All no worries. Right. And let me get my chat uh, maximized a little bit more here. Um, so what we usually do is we go around and uh, have a brief introduction. Uh, we'll we'll let Chuck go last since he's gonna we'll we'll have his introduction basically start our presentation. So Holly, you're first in line on my screen. Okay. You want to tell us who you are, where you are, what uh, you do, why you're here? Um, my name is Holly Cliff. I live in Vancouver, British Columbia. Um, I'm a marketing director. Bas I'm basically a, a vendor or a contractor managing marketing for a number of clients. Um, I do work closely with people who do web development, so I'm finding, uh, and I'm often in the back end of a WordPress website, fumbling around and hoping loading blogs and using Yoast and hoping I don't destroy something. Um, I have a keen interest in knowing more about this so I can deliver more efficiently to my clients. So that that's why I'm here. Great. And I've got Hetty next on my screen anyway. Okay. My name is Hetty Mouchard. I'm in Irvine, California. Right now, I am CEO of a small biotech company, and that's my main concern. That's why I'm here. I'm limping along with a little site. Um, it's mostly when investors come in and they want to make sure we're real or people are applying for jobs, they want to make sure we're legit. So mostly it can't look sketchy and it has to work, and it doesn't at this point in time. So that is my main concern. It doesn't have to sell or do much of anything. In addition, I administer another site for my mother, who is a famous in the world of Japanese American poets, which is a really, really small pond. Um, but she actually gets kind of a lot of people and a lot of interest. And so I want to be able to do a better job with her too. And then there are others, but that's mainly my concern here. So I appreciate the advice and comments from you all. Thank you. Great, and welcome, Michael. Yeah, I'm Mike from Spokane. I uh, manage a bunch of websites. I run WordPress and e-commerce meetups um, pretty often, half a dozen uh, a month. Uh, but most of me, my skill is helping people with their pure business conversion issues. Uh, I am been around WordPress pretty much at the beginning and as a developer the last maybe six, eight years. Uh, but I defer to more experienced um, web folks like Ed um, for the for the bigger challenges. Most of the stuff I do are smaller, you know, two to five million maybe, but not no ESPN sports graphics for me. <laughs> and Ed, thanks for hosting again. And I look forward to the presentation today. Always good to have you, sir. Travis, you're Love next you. on my screen. All right. Good evening, everybody. I'm Travis Elmer. I'm in uh, Escondido, California just north of San Diego. And uh, I run my own e-commerce store uh, website that I built that uh, as I dig in more and more, especially speaking a lot with Ed, I finding out how inadequate it is. Um, so uh, here I am learning more. Awesome. And you're just up the road from, uh, from me and down the road from, uh, from uh, Hetty. He's in, uh, is it Encinitas or Escondido? I always get the two mixed up. For Escondido. Some Escondido. All right. And the illustrious Mr. Daryl Oberg, whom I did not call Derek this time. 
thing. Hey, I'm Daryl. I'm from in Kelowna, BC, in Canada here. I help Ed run this. I co-host this. I've been working with him on that. My primary role and usually day to day is strategy and paid advertising. Google, LinkedIn, Bing. I've been more in the social, the paid side, but Lately, I've been doing more social and I work with a lot of WordPress. So I'm not an expert. I built some websites. I've used it. But ultimately, nowadays, I outsource it and use other resources and for SEO because I like to stay in my lane. I'm, I'm going to pause this. They're screaming kids. Well, as always, welcome, Daryl. And thanks for everything that you that you do and all your help. Uh, and we've got a late arrival here from Greg Dinger. Greetings from um, beautiful Mount Shasta. I own a web hosting company. Um, we have built e-commerce sites for the past 20 plus years. Um, I'm in a Windows environment. I have three servers running under the Plesk control panel. And I've got, I don't know, about 20, 25 WordPress installs. So it's been an interesting career. Well, thank you for being here. And yeah, I've been to Mount Shasta. It is quite gorgeous. It is. Um. Uh, well, I guess that leaves me. I'm Edward Sanchez. I'm in San Diego, California. Um, my company, obviously, is Brass Ring Web Design. I've been uh, involved with WordPress since 98, building websites since, uh, I'm sorry, WordPress since 2009, building websites since 98. Uh, my specialty is helping uh, small businesses who uh, want to bridge the gap between this great technology of WordPress and being actually able to build an effective website uh, because basic information and pretty pictures does not make an effective website. There's a lot more to it. And um, I work, uh, I love working with people who have that DIY spirit um i i we were talking uh chuck and i were talking before the um uh we started um that i like to kind of rechannel people's diy enthusiasm rather than them spending all this time and effort becoming a mediocre or, or bad web designer uh, i take care of the web design part and i train them and coach them to be a more effective marketer using their WordPress website as, um, as the hub of their marketing. And uh, I'm glad to be here. I'm looking forward to hearing Chuck's presentation. And uh, without any further ado, if you don't mind, Chuck, I'll just turn it over to you um, and tell us about Yoast and SEO in 2024. All right, well, thank you very much, Edward. Uh, my name again is Chuck Hardwick and I'm based in San Diego in the Ocean Beach neighborhood. I've basically uh, worked in technology my entire career, starting in 1984. I've done programming, network management, uh, software QA, uh, lots of different technology roles. And then I got involved uh, with internet marketing for the first time in 2003 with a company that at the time was based in San Marcos, California called lawinfo.com. And I became very interested in internet marketing. Um, and then I started my own company, which is called Dancing Panda Marketing about 10 years ago, 11 years ago in 2013. Um, so, uh, with WordPress, I learned WordPress off of a YouTube video and just by trial and error. And after I sort of got the hang of WordPress, I knew, uh, SEO was an important component. Uh, you know, I actually was in sales for a while, um, in terms of SEO and 
the thing that we used to hammer in the sales process is you can have the best looking website in the world, but if the right types of people aren't seeing it, it's probably not going to give you the return on investment that you're looking for. Um, and so um, I also taught myself SEO. And as I got into WordPress, I started to hear about Yoast, the Yoast plugin. And what I want to uh, do today is not really lecture you guys on Yoast. I want it to be more of a conversation. I hope to learn something. Uh, after hearing all the introductions, I can see there are some very smart people in this group. And of course, I've known Edward and Daryl for a while, so I know you guys pretty well. Um, but I hope to be able to share what I know about Yoast, but also learn something. And one thing that I've found uh, with teaching people WordPress or SEO is you always get some great questions, something that you don't think about. People think about things differently. So I would welcome questions. Um, and so the rules that I read earlier, I'm glad I read those because it kind of resonated with me is um, if you have a question to put it into the chat. So please do that. And Edward, if you don't mind, if you, cause I'm gonna be sharing my screen if someone puts a question in there, I'm not sure if I'll notice it, but if feel free yeah, to can. interrupt me and just let me know if so and so asked something, that well, would be you, great. Do you want to take uh, so you want to take questions as we go? Because I sometimes yes, tend to I think prefer so. to let somebody do their pitch, and then we can take questions out. No, I, okay, I, but I we think can... it's actually better to do it in real time because um, if someone, you know, maybe they're not getting a very basic thing and then sure. the rest of it's not going to make sense. Okay. So yeah, yeah, feel free to interrupt at any time. So let me go ahead and sh share my screen and I'll pull up my little outline. Um, so first of all, I just wanted to talk briefly on what is SEO and maybe everyone here knows the difference between an organic campaign and a paid campaign. Does anyone not know the difference? Is that something I should skip over? So, okay, it sounds like everyone uh, understands the difference of it. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> oh, you know, okay. So yeah. I'm gonna yeah, go ahead and share. Yeah, just, a, just a little a little description on yeah. the difference. When... Now, can you see my screen? I've just pulled up Google. Is that showing up okay? Uh, we still, I, see, I your still see your outline. Oh, okay, let's see. So I'm glad I asked. Um, so I'm getting a weird are you on multiple, from Meetup. Are you on multiple monitors? Let me stop sharing. No, I have a single computer. Uh, let's yeah. see, what did I do wrong here? Let me, okay, now I shared a Google screen. Can you see that? Yeah. No, okay, great. That. All right. So let me let me quickly explain the difference uh, between organic placement and paid placement. So uh, the phrase I'm going to use is a phrase that I've worked on uh, for SEO because I market myself as a WordPress tutor and I'm located in San Diego. So I'll be using this phrase as an example. Um, when I talk about the Yoast plugin. Now, if you type a phrase into Google, normally you get some sponsored results up at the top. Those are not organic. Those are pay-per-click. So what organic SEO entails is not getting into this area. That would be something you would want to talk to Daryl about, you know, someone that knows AdWords. Um, so when you get some results like this, you'll see sponsored, sponsored, sponsored. And then once you get below this question about AI, then the results that are below um, below these, these are the organic results. So what's fantastic about organic placement is you don't pay for it. it hey, once Chuck, you- uh -huh. Chuck, Can I make a, a quick suggestion? Yes. Uh, if you have a question, um, does everybody know how to put up their virtual hand? 
there's down in the reactions you just click on raise hand that way we, we're not uh breaking that's a great idea too much yeah but i i actually was going to raise one while you were here um sure. for those of us who are typically checking on our results and things like that do you recommend that we be using an incognito window as opposed to one that's uh has all the cookies and settings that uh, Google caters for us, which may excellent us question. And yes, yes, that is definitely preferred. Um, so, and in some cases, it makes sense when you're checking results to try it from different devices. So, if you have a phone or an iPad, um, and especially one, if you can find a device that you've never logged into, you may get slightly different results. So yes, absolutely. Because you can get some skewed results if you're not going that route. Because I, I regularly question. have people will tell me, yeah, when I when I type it, I pop up and things like that. And it's like, well, remember, you know, Google is like a very faithful dog who sits there and knows where your slippers are hidden um and brings them to you every time um, and I, the irony true. is with ads it actually hurts ad performance because the person's not clicking so google thinks it's not working and x optimization a little fun fact yeah what do, what does uh the uh incognito mood mode do for ads if you just view them if you've got an ad set up, well, you still get cookies in incognito. It just clears them out after you start cookie free and then it stores them and deletes them. That's my understanding. You still run cookies, but you're starting fresh. But it's if you're if you're running an ad on impressions. Um, yeah, they can track IP and other things too. They may put two and two together. You'll still get charged checking impressions. Oh yeah, you click an ad, you get charged. You click it, someone no, not clicks clicking it, it, but but just when it pops up generally no okay but this isn't really about seo that's a different discussion it's... but yeah it's a good question Edward, because the other variable too is where you're located so if i type in um san diego wordpress tutor and i'm in san diego i may get a slightly different result than someone that's in vancouver typing it so yeah there are a lot of factors so but yeah, that's basically the difference between um, organic and paid placement. Does that make sense? Okay, outstanding. Now I want to take a photo of my little outline. I was going to do it on a share screen, but I don't think that's going to work very well. So I'm going to just so I can stay organized, take a photo and I'll just read it off my phone. So I go in the right order. Um, so I wanted to show you guys um, how to install the plugin. Um, is everyone here familiar with how to install a WordPress plugin? Is there anyone that wants me to, to review that or should I just maybe skip can, that one? Maybe we can have a show of hands of anybody who is not using Yoast. Is anybody not using Yoast? I've used alternative plugins, but I'm familiar with the plugins. I, I have Yoast on the website. I, I couldn't tell you how to use it. No idea. I'm familiar I with installed it. You have not installed it? Well, no, I don't do the web development. The web developer installs it and then I use it. I, I don't okay. know that I need to know that. Okay. So you, you have it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, well, we'll just skip over that in the interest of time. Um, and then I wanted to talk about the general concepts uh, with Yoast. So um, in terms of the nuts and bolts of how it works. So I'm actually going to uh, pull up my website, which is dancingpandamarketing.com and show you basically what it does and how it works. And the way um, I like to think of Yoast is it's really, it's a coach. So what it does, it doesn't, um, it, it basically guides you in what you need to do for a particular piece of content. So in the example of um, 
this phrase that I worked on um, for uh, San Diego WordPress Tutor. I'm going to show you that as an example. Now I need with uh, to get to bear with me uh, to the right page. And then I'll go ahead and edit that page. So once you've installed Yoast, uh, basically what it does is it grades your uh, your page um, based on different criteria. Actually, let me let me back up a little bit. Um, before you you start working on the on page SEO for a particular page, you have to tell Yoast. Uh, what key phrase um, you're uh, looking for. Now, can you see my screen? I, I'm pulled up the Yo section of that page. Is this is this the premium version? No, no, no. This is the free version. You can can you see my page now? I just want to make sure I'm doing the screen yeah. share. Okay, excellent. Um, and so then um, once you have um, told Yoast what phrase you want to optimize, then basically what you click on the SEO analysis and what Yoast does is it looks at uh, 15 different criteria and then it, it grades those criteria like a traffic light. So when you're starting, most of the items will be read and that means they need work. And then as you kind of uh, follow best practices and um, do the right things for that particular item, it will turn to green. And if you're halfway there, it will be yellow. So the results that, it, or the, uh, the criteria that Yoast looks at um, are outbound links, that you have uh, the image in the key phrase, that you have images on this on that page, uh, that you have some internal links, um, you have the key phrase in the introduction, you're um, using proper key phrase density, uh, you have the key phrase in the SEO title. Okay, I see a question. Yes, Edward. Regarding outbound links on like a home page and what mm -hmm. have you, mm -hmm. um, what what links would you have on a homepage or a landing page that go other than your own site? So great question. And yeah, you, you know, one of the um, concepts of internet marketing is that you want your website to be like a casino. You want it to be very easy to find but you don't want to make it too easy for people to leave because they may not come back. So it's a little bit of a, a balancing act because to have the best SEO possible, you do want to have an outbound link. So what I generally will use for an outbound link is a link to another property that's going to benefit that website owner. In my case, or in the case of many people, it's a link to their LinkedIn profile or to another website that's gonna benefit that customer. Does that make sense? So let's see. Um, so that's basically, um, how it works. And so, you know, really doing, uh, using Yoast to uh, make a, a specific page very strong for SEO, it really is not rocket science. If you're smart enough to be able to uh, follow a recipe and cook something, then you're smart enough to use Yoast. Um, so um, any questions so far? We're all good? Okay, I wasn't sure it got so quiet if there was a problem with uh, with Zoom. Okay, 
Um, so now, um, as far as learning what all of these specific things are, um, basically, um, I mean, I can go through them one by one if you want. Um, I will say that uh, one of the um, the easiest ones uh, where you're going to get a quick bang for the buck is with the title tag. So the title tag is very important. And so when you, uh, within Yoast, as you create your title tag, it will grade it. So I, I can see right away, there's something I need to update in here. It says 2023. So I'm going to go ahead and update that. And the title tag, so Yoast actually looks at um, not only what you have as your title tag, but also uh, the length of it. And if it's not long enough, then it will turn a different color. Um, so All right. Um, oh, and so I've just discovered, I didn't realize this is something new. It says use AI. So I wonder if that's going to ask. Okay. So that's in the paid version, which I do not have. Interesting. Okay. So So that's the title tag. Um, and then in terms of um, the meta description, um, the meta description is, are, I want to make sure everyone is familiar with the, what the meta description is. Do you guys all know what that is? And even if you don't, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and show you on a Google search. I'm curious about how the that 2024 in the, in the title tag. Well, I've found with the meta description, it's a recommendation to Google and it will, if it wants to go to your, to your site and choose what it wants to be the meta description. So what you put here, cause I've had the tweet when discussing SEO with people, what you see there doesn't guarantee Google takes everything as well. Basically everything you see is a suggestion to Google nowadays. So you're guiding it and hopefully it uses it, but it's not a guarantee. I agree 100%. And you cannot always get the uh, meta description um, to be what you want, but it, I was able to get a strong call to action in this one, which I, you know, if someone sees this, I want them to contact me um, to get more information. So I do recommend with the meta description that you have a call strong to action because someone may type this in, they don't even have to click here. They may just read this and say, oh, I can just call and get a free consultation. And, you know, that generate interest in, uh, in this service. So that's um, my recommendation for the meta tag. Of course, this uh, meta description, you'll notice, it does have the key phrase that I'm going for. So that's why it's green. But the other, as I just mentioned, the other side of that coin is having a strong call to action so that, you know, you can get more leads basically. Can I make an observation? Yes. Um, you, ha you have a pretty strong grasp on the uh, WordPress Tutor San Diego keyword string. Uh, but if one were to be in a in an industry where it's maybe more competitive, um, one of the beauties of the meta description and and I mind you, when I use Yoast, um, I type into the WordPress description, um, you know where we get to lay out a snippet for the page, and I take that very same thing and I put it in the Yoast. Um, the reason I, I always use the description for WordPress is I have um, my articles show up on my home page and actually uh, I have to be really careful that I uh, just from the way that they display 
that uh, I use that description judiciously because if I go too long or too short, it's going to look kind of, do you mind if I share my screen really quick so I can describe what Not I'm talking all. about? Go for it. Um, uh, let's see. Here we are. Okay, so on my, this is a Brass Rings homepage. So on my homepage, I have all my articles and, and news, they show up in this feed. It's a horizontal feed. I only show five of them at a time, but you will see that white space is based. This is whatever it displays here, which is using the, um, uh, I'm trying to remember exactly the widget that it uses, but it's a display widget that shows up on the, on the, on this page. If I go too long, it will, and I have it set to display a bunch of different articles. The longest article is going to determine the, um, well, the white space, you know, I have to be, and it's not perfect. But if I allow some of them to go too long, then I end up with a lot of white space, even if the article is off the page, which is kind of bad. So what I do is I go ahead and I grab a reasonable snippet that I then also paste into Yoast. Mm -hmm. um, and the one, the one in Yoast doesn't necessarily have to be the same one that you're using as a snippet for your articles, because remember one of the beauties of Yoast, and I'll turn it back over to you, Chuck. Uh, one of the beauties of Yoast is that you're actually getting to predetermine your Google result. So if yours is very basic, you know, yours is, but you don't, you don't have a lot of competition in this market from what I've noticed. Um, if yours is um, very simple, somebody else might have spent a little bit more time crafting a marketing message because part of the beauty of Yoast is, is not just to attract the search engines, but also to attract the eye of viewers on Google. So if, if somebody else has a really well-crafted, compelling message, in their Google results and yours just says, you know, call us and here's your phone number that, that could send the click to somebody else. So be, don't let it just be for the Bing bots. You know, it's gotta be for, um, for actual eyes that, uh, that might be compelled. Otherwise. That's a good point. When you're looking at the competition, it probably makes sense to compare the meta descriptions and see if you if something you could do better. Yeah. Um, you want to so, be, yeah. be sexier than than your competition. Now there is a, a limit to the length of the meta description, um, and I think um, let's see if I start see. So yeah, if you go over this amount of characters, see how it turned orange? So yeah, it has to be relatively short. It, otherwise, Google is just going to chop it off. So it has to be short and sweet on that meta description. Um, so um, I can go through a lot of these, um, but in the interest of time, uh, the one, to be honest, that is takes the most amount of time is the, you know in terms of what Yoast is looking for is the number of words of content. So um, I've read different numbers, but the number that Yoast is looking for for uh, a well-optimized page of content is 300 words. So this particular page is 626. So uh, a minimum of 300, and sometimes you know, it's hard to come up with that much content. Um, and it's time consuming, you know, and you know, you're, you're trying, uh, you want to use your time wisely. So in terms of 
of generating the content um, that is going to be long enough. A couple of the strategies that I've used with success are one, you can go on Fiverr. There are people on Fiverr that for five, 10 or $15 will write you 500 words of SEO optimized content. You tell them what phrase you're looking for. And then, you know, it doesn't cost much. And then you may need to clean it up slightly, but that is an effective way to get it going because it, it can be really tough to, to generate the content, just time consuming. Uh, the other strategy that I've used with success is chat GPT. Um, and again, uh, chat GPT can generate some good content. Is it going to be perfect? No, but it'll give you, it, it kind of gets you over the hump with writer's block. It gets the ball rolling. Um, and then you can uh, take that content and clean it up. And it really kind of like kicks it up a notch. So when ChatGPT um, started to get um, really popular, I thought, gosh, it'd be fun to try to uh, see if I could come up for a phrase like San Diego ChatGPT consultant. So I actually used ChatGPT and created the content on this page. And it looks like I'm still getting a number one ranking, at least with my login. Um, so um, with ChatGPT, I can show you uh, sort of um, some strategies. But the other thing that I, I would like to do, if anyone um, that um, is on this call is, has a particular page of content on their website that they would like some help with, I thought it would be helpful to see if I can, uh, if you want to share your screen and log in, I can turn some of those uh, red lights to green for you um, and help you with some content. And, you know, and I think that really the way you, if you're serious about learning Yoast, the way you're really going to learn it is by trial and error, just jumping in and, you know, picking a phrase um, and then uh, developing a page of content for that phrase. See if you can get some of those traffic lights to go from red to green and then start following the results. Is there anyone on this call that has a, a page that they that they're currently working on that could use some help? Okay, no you can worries. Use, you can use my website as a guinea pig because mine is not very well SEO'd. And Haiti, is it Haiti or Heidi? Hedy, actually. Hedy, Hedy. If, oh, if you were gonna volunteer, I, go ahead. I'd be willing to humiliate myself. Um, <laughs> No, don't think of it like that. Just think of that <laughs> as, you know, that uh, you're getting some free consultation here. Okay. I um, I really need help with my company website, but it's probably incomprehensible because it's scientific. So maybe I'll do my um, mom's site. She's just a writer and I don't purport to know what I was doing Shot here. GPT, it can be surprising, surprisingly scientific. It's worth a shot. And I'm... It really can. I've written articles on Ozempic and um, uh, for a life sciences client. Um, Chat GPT can be your best friend. How oh, interesting. I, how about, well, okay, so here's my mom's site. So how do you want to do this? Do I can you oh, share your screen? Here, yeah. I'll co I'll, okay. I'll co host you. And that will allow you to uh, share your screen. So what, Should I do you know how to share your screen on uh, Zoom? I do. Um, I'm going to put both these sites in. And I think I remember sharing both of these to this room before. Um, oops, what did I do to that? Oh, I didn't put the link in, but that's a site. Okay, so Are you going to, hey, Chuck, if they're doing it on their computer, they need to have a chat GPT account set up with OpenAI. Oh, correct. And I don't. Actually, hold on. Is that on the plan? Uh, da, 
dun, dun, dun. I was more thinking of showing some things with Yoast, um, but if I have a chat GPT account, so if there's, if, if you want me to generate some content, I can do that and then paste it into the chat. And then maybe that we should just could... stay. Maybe we should just stay in the realm of Yoast for now. Maybe we could do Chat GPT on a on a separate one. Because I mean, the, the, you're on you're opening a huge can of worms there. Yeah, I have an interesting. So I've used these. I you found another one that does um that that does what Yoast Premium will does and even the free version. But with these red light, green lights, and these tools. There's an art between having content for humans and writing to the point where it's green because you think it's the best thing to do when actually the content at that point can work against you. So sometimes over the years, as long as it's mostly green and you know it's for a human, I'm willing to, I've accepted that if it's not there's some plug, a plugin doesn't say it's perfect, but I know it is, I'll let it run and adjust later because it's guidelines and Google's pretty smart nowadays. What are your thoughts on that? I think it's an excellent point. And the other point I would make is that really um, the, the guideline for success for a specific phrase is, are you coming up number one on Google? So there's been some phrases that uh, I've gone after and I haven't got all the things to turn green but I was coming up number one on Google. So I just stopped working on it because you can't go any higher than number one on Google. You would be above the computer, you know? So it's, it is just guidelines. And the other important thing to note is uh, with SEO, um, with the, especially with a very competitive phrase, you can have all green lights, have everything perfect. It doesn't mean you're going to be number one on Google, because there are other factors that Google is looking at, like your domain, do you have a spammy domain? Uh, do you have high quality links coming to your site? Do you have spammy links coming to your site? Those types of things. So it's not an end all, but it what Yoast allows you to do is to put your very best foot forward in terms of that on-page content. So am I still in the hot seat here? Yeah, you, you, can, like um, yes. you can share your screen. Okay. I made it so anybody can share their screen. You don't have to be a co-host to do that. So just press the green share screen button and it's uh, how many monitors are you on? I'm on two and a humongous one. So I'm going to. Okay, so it'll give you a, a window will pop up and uh, there's also a choice down at the bottom to share sound if you need to share any sound. But um okay. I think I'll just do portion so you don't see my hugely messy desktop. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta hide my tabs too. I don't want you. I have nothing embarrassing, by the way. Just that's fine. So the the first we're thing friends. I would want to know. We're all friends know, here. Oh. <laughs> I the first thing I'd want to know is what um, phrase are you looking for visibility on with Google. Man, I am probably the worst person here because I don't want to do this, but phrase, a uh, Japanese American poet, uh, activist poet. This is for my mother. Um, so, okay. I, I, and to be honest, I have to remember how to navigate around this. And I think her site's a Divi site, by the way, if that matters. And I do see Ideos in there. Everything's up dated so it looks different than I even remember it looking but where should I be right now let's take a look at your home page um and see if just the from a user standpoint okay yeah oh okay oops sorry that's okay my site's so slow right now okay um so let's see okay what... I like the photo and then great she... wow she um is a hundred and had this poetry reading at UCSF. So I was wow. Yeah, I know she's like crazy. That's awesome. Hey, I want to have genes like that. We should <laughs> all be so fortunate. So it was a recording. She doesn't do live events anymore. So that's just another layer of tricky. But 
um, people came in, the hundred people came in and listened. And so anyway, I wanted to put this on our homepage. So I kind of just winged it. It didn't used to look like this, but I just stuck this on here because people were saying, how do I watch it? So I stuck this on here. Um, okay, so I I just remembering it's one whole page. So this used to be, um, she published this when she was 96. Um, and she has a book that she published in the 70s that she is actually pretty well known for. Um, oh, and somebody wrote an autobiography about her. I mean, a biography about her. University of Washington Press wrote that. So, and I forgot, I do sell on this site. I forgot about that, um, which is another tricky thing that I probably need help with. And I figured out how to do it once and I've forgotten what I did before, but it has shipping and everything. But um, anyway, so back to, I guess, I mean, I've, kind of a bunch of junk on this site. Um, so do me a favor, um, right click on the white area and let's take a look at the source and let's see what the current title tag is. So if you do view source. Oops, did I? Or maybe you can't click on that. Uh, let's see. And then search for title. Should I be in Chrome? Everybody says I should do this in Chrome. Um, I use. What browser are you using? I use Safari. Okay. Does that work? Well, um, I, I, I use I think you just opened developer, didn't you? Yeah, Safari should have this info. Okay. So go ahead and close that. Close this. Could I back? Could I just back button it? Uh, maybe just refresh it. Try refreshing and see if it closes. Um, I'm an idiot on Apple. Is this? There you go. Okay. So you said right click oh go to the okay so i'm sorry i'm sorry no worries. you can just go down to pages and select your home page but okay so home page and then right click yeah i was trying to see if the title tag is set so in okay uh yeah i was expecting to see view page or view source in that menu, but uh, maybe with Safari, it doesn't work that way. Well, we can also do it through Yoast. If you go in uh, to click on enable visual editor. This is why I use it. Oh, PC. wait, wait, there you have the Yoast menu. I didn't realize you have the Yoast menu up there. So let's see. <laughs> My scores are red dot. Yeah, so it needs work. Um, let's see. And well, if we just go into edit page. Then we'll get the Yoast. I found the, I put it in the chat. That's what the home is. Okay, the title the tag is. One. There's a few others there, but that's the very first one. Okay, I, it's because I'm sharing, where's my chat? Oh, there. Well, I, I pulled up the site and didn't inspect source. If you, if you click that home button up in the top nav, that'll take you to your home page and then we can edit page. I, it's actually I, set by Yoast too. It says this page is optimized with Yoast. I am in my home page right now. Okay. Then if you just edit page, we'll be able to see your Yoast, which so, will show us all this stuff. Got it. Oops. What? Just click that. Okay. Um, this is my progress bar. Sorry. Slow. You want to click actually on edit page. There we go. Yeah. And scroll down to the O oh, built with TV. Yeah. Scroll on down to to the Yoast plugin. I guess on the. It looks like it's on the right. With improve your at your. Do you see the red? Oh, there it is. SEO okay. analysis. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Okay, it was so on... close carrot. The focus key phrase hasn't been set, so. <laughs> I would suggest you put Japanese American poet and perhaps her name, comma, her name. Although, you know, I'm thinking out loud, let's leave it at Japanese American poet for now. Okay. And then um, go ahead and scroll down, please. And then for the title, do you see where it says SEO title? So um, just click right next to well, site let's, title. Let's, let's back up a second, Chuck. See how it says slug home dash three? Mm -hmm. We should fix that in WordPress first. Because uh, your page should not be called home dash three. It should be called something oh. that's related to your URL. 
so see over on the far right oh. it says url yeah so this uh, so this slug means it's a slash home dash tree because i probably built a bunch of home pages and hid the other ones is that how i did that <laughs> so i will do anyway, whatever i'll shut up go ahead, go ahead chuck yeah, let's not worry about that for now. But, you know, before we get too crazy making some changes, has this website been backed up recently? Um, I'm on site ground. Oh, and... you are. Okay, good. Yeah. So they make a backup uh, every day for the last 30 days. So if things go completely south, we could recover. I mean, have you been working on it today? No. Okay, good. All right. So for now... Um, in where it says SEO title and it says title page separator, just put your click your mouse next to site title to the right of it. And then hit backspace. Okay. And hit it again. Hit, just clear all that out. Just get rid of this. Did yeah. It... And I want you to write in Japanese American poet. You don't have to worry about capitalizing stuff, by the way, Eddie. Oh, okay. <laughs> not, not, in, not in these places. Okay, good. Um, so you fixed that. Um, now um, let's uh, come down to. Do you see where it says SEO analysis? Actually, let's work on the meta description. That's good. We're right there. So we want in the meta description we want to um, include the phrase Japanese American poet. So. Um, is your call to action with this website or is the goal of this website is to sell some of the products that I saw on the homepage, like the books? Yes. I think ultimately, yes. I have to admit that. Yes. Um, okay. Just to um, eventually put more information in. So when people are, you know, students uh, are looking for her, she's taught in high schools. Um, she's in textbooks. Um, my daughter goes to University High School in Irvine, and she has five pages about her grandma in her textbook, in her Putin Mifflin textbook. You should, so she should be non apologetic about being a marketer because I mean, that's basically okay, so WordPress's number one job. <laughs> Thank you. So, so in look... the short, in the short run, my, my, um, uh recommendation for meta description would be something like click here for information on japanese american poet and then her name maybe this is a good time to test out the ai option or is that only in premium that's yes only that's in only premium. in premium and that slug you could probably delete home three if that's just the seo slug and it would look cleaner I just like to have chat, sometimes just have chat GBT open in a separate monitor, you know, I mean, it's, whoa, whoa, everybody's whoa, you're, you're going too far ahead here. We got to do this first. No, I know, but everybody's, next, next. everybody's, I hear you. We'll go everybody's, everybody's adding AI options. Um, Is that what you said? I Yes, exactly that. right. Yeah. And then put her name, put her name. Three. Is that well, what you it, in the meta description, I would include her name too. Click here for information on Japanese American poet. She goes by Mitsume Yamada and Mitsu Yamada. Is there a way to put them both in? Sure. Uh, I would actually not waste uh, uh, my my apologies, but I would not waste characters on click here. Um, everybody knows click here is a thing. Yeah. So this. Yeah, actually, yeah. I mean, you could even Just say Japanese American poet, and people will know to click. And then mention even if there's room there, put a quick blurb about the books. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's okay. a great idea. I can. I can do that. I can come back and do that. But you know, Yoast is uh, it has that little orange line. You want that to go green, so it's. It's better to have the the meta description a certain length. So as you add that, as you add more characters, that will go from orange to green. I will generally try to try to see if there is. Do you have some compelling uh, verbiage on the homepage that you can bring over? I do. Let me um, open another window, right, and look at her homepage. Sorry. 
Um, should I go into her site or go into her Wikipedia? I mean, where should I go to get this? Well, one of the great processes for putting together any website is to kind of have your your uh, elevator pitch in mind. Yeah, so, I but, should. Um, okay, so, yeah. So there is this, you know, when people ask for information, on, oops, I meant to not do this. Um, When, <laughs> this is spelled wrong, but oh, well, I don't. You can probably wrong. get a knowledge panel through Google if she's got enough stuff going on already. Yeah, let's look at the homepage in a separate tab. At the homepage of her website or yeah. of the actual website that we're looking at. So you yeah, have yeah. Tabs. Hey guys, pause for a second. Don't do this now, but this should be noted. See where it says claim this knowledge panel. I would take write this down for now. I would look into that later. If you can claim that for her, that'll give her a lot of visibility if they look her up. On the right, bottom right, see where then at the bottom. Yeah, I would look into that. But only Don't if, do it you're, now. if you're That's willing to you only if you're willing to monitor it. Yeah, do you look at all the fine print of it? It definitely it does help. It's something to think about. It's up to you. Yeah. I see. I, I have no idea what this is, but I take it that um I yeah. they want to make sure that the people like it's not a fan doing this, but it's actually her, the verified portion of that. Right. I mean, you can become part of the conversation if you're willing to answer questions about that, about her. Okay. If she, if she or you do not have the time, I, I, you I know, encourage I... you not not to take that on because then people will okay. get missed. I, I honestly um, would love to. I need to do so much more, but she's alive and I work full time. So I'm trying to, when people are constantly every week asking for interviews i'm trying to field those so, and there's so much wrong information i haven't had time to fix it um so i will someday but thank you and i'm gonna actually write that down so what is that google knowledge panel yeah i i would say you're better off click um uh claiming your business profile on google she might not this. have one set up you are probably supposing correctly because I don't know what that is, but um, okay. So, so all of us. Let's good. look at that homepage. Let's that go you to your homepage in a yours. separate tab. Okay. And let's yeah. see if we have any content here that might be useful to add. Um, to how the, about this? Okay. You can maybe take a little uh, part of it, not all of it. It's not going to let you. It's going to red light you. We've already put that in. So uh, um, maybe the as a teenager, she was incarcerated. Are there any awards? Um, she is an honorary doctorate uh, from. She and Gwen Eiffel got honorary doctors at the same time from, I don't remember. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I would, I would got, grab the, as a teenager, she was incarcerated at Minnetonka, Minnetonka uh -huh. concentration camp along with her family. Okay. Okay. I mean, and then that, put it that, that, that is, that is part of your story. That is interesting people you know see something like that and they 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 will click on something like that to find out more you want to engage okay that's i'll drag along my poor grammar in that sentence too um so let's see that's good yeah so it's green now so you have that that's a good length oh wonderful okay so it was orange because of the length Right. And you can see if it'll allow you to uh, type in like books for sale. Okay. Yeah. But I, do you want to put books after a statement like that? She, um, she's known as a poet. I'm saying poet because that's kind of the quaintest thing. She's known as a hum feminist human rights activist. She was a board member of Amnesty International for two terms. Um, she sounds like an impressive lady. It's really super political. Um, so 
I mean, this is kind of folksy saying she's just a poet. So should I put activists, feminists, human rights activists, this business in here? She has multiple pages too. The other thing we're looking at here is your different pages can have different meta descriptions. So maybe on your order, on your if you, if you have the page about the books, you put more about her books, right? The about can have a different right. meta description from the home. They're all, this right? Is, yeah, I, hate to, I hate to waste page. characters. If, well, I still right, have yeah. some, if I still have some characters left, I would put something in there that will be compelling and interesting and uh, and in in alignment with the goals of the website. Every website should have at least one goal, if not multiples. And this is where you get to compel people in to come fulfill the goals of your website. So if you right. want to sell books, don't be ashamed. Try right. uh, books available or. Um, Okay, Holly, what did but the, you say? The title of that, did it say that there was, she has a new book out? Uh... She, she, yeah, in 2019, she has a book called Full Circle. Camp Notes is the one that's taught at UCLA and UCSB and UCSD, the, her friend group who are professors teach her book pretty much on the West Coast, but um, that book, book is called Camp Notes. So should I... So I mean, you get 156 characters, Chuck. Is that what it is? Mm, I'm not sure. I can Google it. It's that sounds about right. That's and cool. these these need to be posed in sentences. I can't. I shouldn't just put full circle camp notes or should, can I, well, can you I can. That? But once you start getting towards the end of your allotment, you uh -huh. have to start maybe becoming. Yeah, see, it's you don't have that much. Try try a simple call to action. You don't want to see more there. Um, learn more here. Learn more today. Learn more now. Um, New book available. Or, yeah. Although I don't even know that that's going to fit. Uh -huh. yeah. I mean, it. Yeah. You can also let me see. Are there any ands or anything that we can abbreviate? Yeah, that's already pretty. You can uh, take the um, the word with and remove the ith. And or along with her family, unless it's very much really critical. Yeah. Then leave it. I don't know. It's your story. You could take as a teenager out and put was incarcerated as a teen. Yeah. And you probably save some characters there. As a teen, she was incarcerated. You don't need she was, you just need Japanese American uh, poet, um, was incarcerated as a team. I don't know, it matters where. Yeah, you can take the family. period at the end of Yamada, that'll get you another character and just bring it into one sentence. Uh, and what, as a teen, along with her, well, it might, would matter that it was um, a World War II event. Oh, yeah. lose, already... lose the period after Yamada. Yeah. That'll make it a, a, a logical sentence and save you a character. Okay. Okay. I see. So take out along with her family and just have with her family, with W her family. Okay. Whoop. Too far. Oh, you just want it just with her family. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so now you've got clear communication. Now you've got time for a call to action. And you can be a little bit more um, uh, luxurious about it. <laughs> so, so I see it's up here. I see. So. Yeah, see, hmm. that gives you a little glimpse of what somebody looking at this on a uh, device. What, what the heck is that date? <laughs> Is that the last time I changed the site? What is that date? That's an interesting How did that question. get there? It can't be yeah, the last that, time that it was indexed. It's, yeah, no, it's the last time this page was published. If you look on the right, you'll see the same date. Oh, yeah. okay. Hmm. But you, I think you can edit that. You can just you uh, it to look more recent. So like when I hit update, it's going to change to this date today? Probably that's no. a good question. No, the published date will remain the same. You have to, but you can change it 
if you but want you, to change your published date. You uh -huh. are going to have to hit update or you're going to lose all this work. At some point, well, we, you're going to want to yeah. hit update. You need My a CTA, answer. though, something, buy her book or something. Yeah, she hasn't changed any content, so it's okay. Yeah. But what's on the homepage? You could, you could put, because um, you might put buy her book here on, on a conversion page. And on this page, you might write learn her story here or um, connect it to the content that you have on the page. Well, you could probably achieve both by pushing the, the, the brand new book, you know. Uh, okay. Put the title of the book has just been published. I, I won't say this is good page design, but her book, the link is here on the homepage. Okay. By full circle today. There you go. I have no shame in making a statement like that. And you shouldn't either, Hedy. Oops. Well, there you go. You got it. Beauty. Okay, so that's, good. That's a nice little snippet. Thank Everybody you. Everybody pat yourself you on the back. You guys are terrific. This is so fun. This is hey, awesome. Travis, I want you paying attention because we're going to be doing stuff like this if you, uh, if you want to raise your game on your website. That's creating amazing. descriptions, creating. I'm actually following along on my website. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Now, so. Um, so go back. Let's not let's not del dive into readability because that's outside of my wheelhouse. Let's stick to the SEO. So click on SEO analysis, please. And so you analysis. got there. You go. So you've got some green. You got some green lights. That's good. So, um, you know, then sort of what you do is you you just look for all everything that's red and you try to get them to come to green and you just repeat rinse and repeat until you get everything green um so i think do any of these confuse you as to what you would need to do here's um, a question for the whole panel uh chuck you said earlier if we had to, to have those outbound links which yost wants to uh track um on my website my outbound links are icons with links on them they're on my mm -hmm. home page mm -hmm. and yet Yoast does not acknowledge them. I imagine that um, Google still does and Bing still does, but this is kind of a, a, a hole in, in the Yoast plugin because it doesn't seem to recognize that. And, uh, you know, I don't want to just do another link to LinkedIn just to make Yoast happy. But any thoughts on that? That's a good question. I don't know. I, uh, it, you know, Yoast is not a perfect tool, mm -mm. Um, but pretty damn good though. The free version is powerful enough for the kinds of things I've been doing. So I would have to research that. I don't know if um, I don't know how to answer that. It's it's no, possible no, no. You, that you don't you, you don't need fine. to you don't need to add link. Um, so. You've got your key phrase like this good minute. Okay, so. What is uh, the key phrase? I'm sorry. The, what is so the, the dent, let's talk about the density. So the second one, the key phrase was found zero times. That's less than the recommended minimum of two times for a text of this length. So some in a, in a perfect world, you could work in the phrase Japanese American poet twice on the homepage and then that uh, red would turn to green. So sometimes that's easier said than done. I, of course, as Daryl mentioned, you want it, you know, you don't want the text to sound too robotic or too formulaic, um, but- Or too, bla if, or too black it, hat. <laughs> yeah, it, if you can work it in in a natural way, maybe in that first sentence, a claim- I maybe don't really change. Use these plugins anymore if you map out all the keywords and everything ahead of time mm -hmm. and you write it so natural google's mm -hmm. so smart now i mean these are good tools if you're trying to you're not really sure but once you do it for a while i don't even look at a plugin i kind of know does it sound real 
like, you know, generally I've got the titles, the layout. Google's like a lot of the, how it used to be, it's either a good guide, but I don't find they pull the same weight they used to. Mm -hmm. Every, well, the I, thing I, is, remember, Yoast pops up in every post, every page, every product. Um, so it's available to guide you. You may not, you know, guide, somebody yeah. who, who's only primarily working on landing pages or home pages, fine, you, you may not need it. But considering this pops up on everything, every article you do, it it's a very quick, easy way to optimize your your SEO on the fly. So I, I always recommend using it. I just put it in here. Yeah, I found I've used them more nowadays for stuff like <clears throat> changing the preview image or setting do not follows and things like that versus the actual keyword part. That's that's sort of how I've been working with it. It is a good tool. I'm not saying it is. It's uh... No, it is. But if <clears> you're not doing a lot of articles, if you're not using your blog, for instance, um, it doesn't matter as much. But if you're if you're somebody like Travis, who has a a WooCommerce site with a lot of product pages, if you're somebody like me who's regularly posting other people's content on my website, it it's really uh, gratifying to have that Yoast at the bottom of every construct. It's really I've had people say make it green and then their SEO got worse. So basically well, I always take with the green you take it with a grain of salt. You don't right. have to make everything green. Yeah. It can I, just the totally. fact that you can get a sense, just the fact that you can you can have a preview of how that page, because remember on our websites, um any page or post could show up in search. So mm -hmm. the ability to preview how it's going to look in search is was the first thing that, you know, years ago made me fall in love with it. Just I know what this is going to look like on Google. So I know what my viewers are going to be seeing. All right. You got a green light. Now you added it twice. <laughs> Great job. Doesn't it feel good to get a light to go from red to green? Oh my God, that's great. Isn't that a cool feeling? <laughs> it's very like good. I did, I did SEO. <laughs> <laughs> Especially because I didn't know what a key phrase was about two minutes ago. So that's awesome. So yeah, just, just think of if so, just always be asking yourself, if, uh, you know, what are people typing to find my site? Because people are looking for you. You just have to align what they're looking for with what you're offering. And Another trick, you make a blog with questions because people talk to their phones and assistants now, and then you've got the questions are asking covered. You can SEO the questions, but in a blog with this question, answer, question, answer, and then it, you feed all the different angles with how people use devices. And if they, come, in, if they come into your website via a blog post, who cares? That's And then by, by tracking your analytics, which is where you find out what's actually happening on your website, you can say, hey, this particular page just got a lot of visits. Maybe I should put an ad there. Maybe I should put an offer there, you know. Um, this might be too basic for this group, but I remember struggling with how to do the blog, just make, I, I think it came, I don't know if it was this site or just another WordPress site, but I couldn't figure out how to not make it all a blog. So I hit it and then made it a site like, yeah, maybe I'm, we should maybe we should do a meeting where we have a presentation on how to go through the basic settings. Yeah, you know, because that, a lot of people, when I look at their websites, their settings are a mess. Um, that was amazing. Um, so it was. I, I I think it was when I just downloaded a theme. I don't think it was through Divi because Divi was a little bit easier for me. Um, but it was just I downloaded a theme and I just it came up with a blog and it said static site or whatever. And I remember just clicking buttons to make the blog go away. Um, but yes, that would be actually a really good way to put content in with the QA. and a I, I, I mean, that would be actually excellent because people would actually be interested. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to put my, my Calendly um, link in the, in the chat. Cause I, I routinely offer free 30 minute consultations for anybody here tonight. I'll extend it to an hour. Um, you know, 
if you want to ask questions or we can share a screen and go through uh, settings or whatever. Anyway, there's the oh. link. Thank you. So I can't believe it's already 725. This meeting end, is supposed to end at 730, right? 730, yes. Okay, so I um, I, I was hoping any... to get through more with the yes, but I think we've run out of time. But do, do you guys kind of get the idea of how it works or do you have any any other questions on Yoast? Was there anything else on your checklist that you wanted to cover that we got sidetracked on? No, not really. I think we we covered the basics and, you know, maybe my checklist may have been a little ambitious for the amount of time. Um, I did the same thing, Chef, with the Google Ads ones. It, it was very, it's tough though, right? Because you're balancing some of it is going to be complex. I mean, you simplify, right. but you can all, but there's all, you have to have some complexity in there. Yeah. It's hard to avoid. I really appreciate this, Chuck, because loading the blogs today, it's probably different than loading a page, but tomorrow I'm going to go in there and I know how to optimize them better now. Well, if I understand what you're saying, the way Yoast works is exactly the same on a blog post as it is on a page. Yeah. It's it, it's a no blog different. is a web page, really. Right. Yeah. So Essentially, is it a web page? It's allows you have very focused content and it's outside of your main pages. Yeah, so I'm looking forward All to right. going in there tomorrow and doing a great job on these blogs. Yeah, and you know, the way I learned Yoast was off of a YouTube video. There's some great YouTube videos that really go step by step on how to get each of those red lights to green. Um, and again, it's not rocket science. It's just a matter of doing it one by one and following the, the, the steps and then you got to monitor the results. Now, Google's not, I mean, tomorrow, uh, Google's probably, you're probably not going to be number one for a Japanese American poet. You may not even be on the first page. You might, you know, but it, you do then have to track the results and kind of keep an eye on it. And then, um, and again, it's not the only thing that you have to do for SEO, but it is putting your, your strongest foot forward for that particular phrase. Yeah, and there's, SEO press, you guys, I don't know, maybe Edward, you want to review that, Chuck? I found that one a few years ago, and I found it had a lot of similar features, and it was cheaper than Yoast, but it was pretty feature-packed. I mean, you can review it. I'm not going to recommend because I kind of just use it for myself, but I found it was more affordable, but it had about the same features, if not more, and it did similar, and it was pretty similar. So it makes recommendations the way Yoast does? I think does. it did. Yeah, it tells yeah. you your SEO and you can set metadata and do not follow. You can set different settings and mm -hmm. just Yoast is yeah, a premium. It's Yoast a more expensive is... option. So if right. someone's on a budget, it, there's options like that. That one I've used, which why I say I found it was good. It, it can be an alternative. But you're talking about the premium version. Well, you need Yoast Premium to access most of the good stuff. Outside of what we just did, it's 200 or more something a year. This one, it starts at 49. Yeah, but somebody like Hetty's not going to need the premium, you know. So, um, well, it's all yeah. useful stuff. Like, I, I yeah, don't know. It, some, it is there's... all useful stuff, but there's a lot of things that we can go premium on. The, fact, the thing that's made Yoast the leader, head, shoulders, knees, and toes above everybody else is the fact that they give a really a lot of value for the free version. I mean, yeah, one thing Yoast that I don't think has in the free version, which is why um for is you can't there's a is I think SEO press, which is last these other ones, you can go to individual pages and say do not index and whatnot, things like that. So if you don't want certain pages to appear, if they don't need all that, it comes down to use case. But yeah, that's why I got it. Yeah. Because you, yours premium was a lot more. Hetty, just just know yeah, that there's tough. people here who go deep dives on technical. The average small business owner doesn't need to. You pretty know, much, that's pretty the thing. It, it comes down to need. Exactly. Hmm. You know, there are some great tools. I mean, there's some uh, hugely expensive tools. You know, but if you if you have say Yoast, and then use something like SEMrush and and uh, uber suggest by neil patel both of which have 
some amazing features in their free versions. You know, you can go a long way. And then at some point in time, if you want to do a deeper dive, if you want to get, uh, you know, more. Uh, oh, Google will tell you for free, too, if you use their keyword planner in Google Ads. You don't search, even have to run ads. A keyword search tool as well, which can help you not only choose a, because the last thing you want to do is choose a, a phrase that no one's searching for. Um, mm -hmm. And, and it may what's intuitive to you may not be what people are actually searching for actually that you know would be a good topic researching seo because seo is 90 percent planning oh i know who i'm gonna so, choose right that would it, doing that high level if you saw i don't know maybe that's you edward 90 percent of this is planning and then the writing's the easier part after that I'll, because I'll be you know exactly my, what you're doing I'll be doing my my hub thing, but I would say that that sounds like a perfect thing for Mr. Oberg. I'm not really, a, yeah, maybe Chris or someone. I'm not, I'm not full in on SEO on that. I, I may or may research. not. I mean, I've done my share of it, but like I've told you before, I mean, Mike's, uh, I I get involved with SEO to the extent that I use best practices, you know, as far as making sure things well, are site right. structure, things like that, your buckets of topics yeah. and stuff. People say, what do I write? Well, a lot of it is it's like writing an essay, your site's like structuring your essay and then the interlinking the high level. It's mm -hmm. you know, Chuck can touched on that point. If you plan that ahead of time, these, a lot of these content questions, you already have it pre outlined the points you want to hit. You'd mm -hmm. already know. I don't know. Let's, let's, We'll find somewhere to sort that one out. That's a, another discussion. That's a precursor to this. And you see, you do that, and then you go to Yoast to write it, and then it helps you finalize it. Yoast won't tell you how to structure or, or do the research of actually what to write on necessarily. You have to know. It guides you just to make sure you're writing as well as you can about it. Right. A great tool. So um, I'm going to throw something in the chat. Uh, so, which is our schedule for upcoming talks. Oh yeah, we have next, one with next month. I'll be speaking on the hub model, uh, which is kind of an organic way of of directing traffic. Um, Daryl covered lead ads, so that's one of the paid ways that you can direct traffic. The hub model, which I follow, is the idea that the hub of your website of your marketing is your website and to make that strong in terms of content and uh and uh, calls to action all of that sort of stuff but also all other you know email marketing and social co uh, content and uh, uh other things you know even even using your business card effectively I've read a couple of books because like speaking of the Japanese, the Japanese are like masters of the business card and <laughs> uh, the way they use them is, is pretty amazing. So there's a lot of ways to get that traffic coming in. What's up, Daryl? I'm going to go eat. Does anyone have any questions? Ah, thanks for <laughs> being here, buddy. Yeah. Thanks for pre presenting. And we'll, Looks like you're done talking. Oh, it auto sense that. So we've got we've got uh okay, I'm gonna go I got distracted. Yeah, once you Bye, once you uh unmute when your hand's up, it'll automatically take it down, which is a it's a I hate that feature. I really do. So in okay. April we're gonna have Magic Will is gonna be talking about course creation, which um those of you who have an expertise, whether it's web design or engraving or A V you know, whatever it may be, uh, course creation is one of the greatest, one of the ways to uh, create, turn content in your head into a monetizable product. Uh, and of course, content creation as well. Uh, do we have any other uh, questions? Or, whoops, I forgot to press submit on that. So anyway, there you have the um, what's coming up um in may yeah i'd be discussing the buyer journey development on a website mm -hmm. 
which I guess is content creation, but an organized process for users to be navigating through a website through to conversion. Don't forget to save the chat. All right. Um, if you didn't put, uh, hey, Mike, um, did you want to put your links in? Mike's the meet, got the meetups? Some, uh, just the list of meetups or? Yeah. Sure. Or whatever, whatever. Um, yeah, All I right. encourage anybody who's here, if you have something that you want us to, to visit or see or experience or learn from, um, by all means, post it in the chat. I just put the instructions there on how to um, save the chat. I want to thank again, Mr. Hardwick for uh, giving us a great presentation on Yoast and thank you for that. Oh, Hetty's got a question. Go ahead. Um, let's see how do I get rid of that because I'm not muted. How have you already done a meetup on um, logins on putting a I want to put some more private information on a page and like, put a login like a password protected page. Uh, is there a way to do that that is a little more stylish than just the there's a number of member plugins available. If you if you uh, if you type uh, go to add add plugin and type in member or membership um, into the search, you'll see okay. that there's a number of plugins that um, that are available that add that capability. Um, if it's it private content, you know you can publish a page privately. Uh, that's one of your publish options. Uh, it's a matter of who who is it that you want to have access. Back to my mom, um, when she has she had a health concern earlier, where she was hospitalized, and I have no fewer than forty family members that need a blow by blow, you know, log of this, and then some friends. And it would have, and she actually does have a private website. And I was sort of thinking it would be nice to combine her sites and just put some private information on that site. But I don't want the public going, oh, there's right. green. I just want it just not to be there for them. So I wasn't well, sure if there was a way to do a login that's. Two things you should know. Remember, there's several published statuses, draft, private. Uh, mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and also that there's uh, different user roles. I don't like the idea of giving everybody one access login, you know? So mm -hmm. you can, uh, if you're gonna have different people coming to your website, I would say, you know, maybe create some subscriber users so they, they can view only. Um, okay. I, I know it's been a long meeting for everybody and I feel like I've asked all the questions, but um, <laughs> is there a possibility of you covering that more deeply or is that a one-on-one -on -one thing or? That's pretty, those are, yeah, that's really not a topic okay. that I think a lot of people would be into because that, that falls under the bucket of, of uh, WordPress 101, oh, you know, okay. so, so I would recommend checking out some of the tutorials on, on WordPress, do some searches on YouTube at any time, whenever you're uh -oh. looking for content, make sure that you vet it by oh. date, because a lot of this, you're going to, you know, people don't take down content from YouTube and you don't want to be learning WordPress from 2014, yeah. you know, okay. so make sure you vet it by that. But, um, there's, there's a lot of content out there. I think Mike and I were talking to you about, uh, about LinkedIn learning is a great and very, you know, I mean, for 40, 50 bucks a month or less, you can get a mountain of not just content on WordPress, but pretty much any other software, uh, all kinds of marketing and sales and, and planning LinkedIn and leadership learning is, and LinkedIn learning is free with a library card. Unfortunately, not in San Diego. Really? Nope. It, oh. it used, it used to, be to be. It else. used to be. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What, what was okay, it? I, uh, I didn't know they had changed that. Yeah. yeah it Linda, was. Linda.com used to be. Linda. That's right. 
It was, and it was free, and I loved it. And then LinkedIn. LinkedIn bought them, and uh, and uh, in in Mike's town, you, if you have a library card, you can access it. But I've tried it, and it, it... I see in certain towns. I know, like I had a child at UCLA that it was free for, and she graduated, and then a son at UCSB, and it wasn't free for them. Learn WP and the dot uh, org repository. If you go right. to uh, yeah. Uh, wordpress.org and then go to community and then there'll be a whole bunch of classes and they'll have learn uh wptv.tv and okay. it'll, it'll replay the meetups they'll schedule a bunch of meetups and there's a bunch of courses on specific uh, wordpress topics and that's all pretty much free okay. i don't think that they start charging on that stuff yet this is the best meeting you guys this is <laughs> so good so helpful so no succinct and God, thank you so much. We're glad Thanks, to be of service. It's great. Everyone who comes here is pretty awesome. All right. Well, and on that note, shall we uh, call it a night, folks? Everybody have a great rest of your day. Thanks very much. Thanks again, Chuck. Nice. Thanks, everybody. Bye Good now. Night. Good night. Take care. Bye-bye.